I'm Gold Derby Senior Editor Denton Davidson, and welcome to our cinematography panel with 2024 Emmy nominees. Joining me now is Adam Bricker, nominated for Best Cinematography for a Single Camera Series Half Hour for Hacks. Adam, this is your fourth career nomination, third for Hacks. Talk about hearing that news again. Where were you? Where you were? Who told you? You know, what's that moment like? Oh uh, well, uh, first of all, thank you so much, Denton, for having me. And um, I was uh, I was actually on on vacation um with with my wife and uh some dear friends uh traveling abroad uh when i heard the news it was uh the evening where we were when the uh when the awards uh were announced uh and um we were just uh coincidentally and conveniently attending a cocktail party so we had like a fabulous champagne toast and it was it was really it was really special but you know, i'm just i'm just so happy for for the whole hacks team uh with all the nominations and um my crew on the camera and lighting side just so happy and um thrilled to be recognized yeah i was gonna say 16 nominations for hacks this season including best comedy series and a lot of people are saying this is the best one yet i mean the show just keeps getting better and better what is it like to be part of this series that's become such a success oh, i'm just so lucky you know as a as a as a cinematographer um you know you you, you try to do uh, a good work um on every project you work on and you can't really control what happens to them after after you shoot them and we're just so lucky to to have this this project go uh out into the world and and be received and and loved by by so many people um me personally i just i, I feel so lucky to be involved in scripts that we get from Jen, Paul, and Lucia and the writing team are just fabulous. And it's an honor to work with Jean and Hannah and her whole cast. It's it's really, it's really a, a dream project, and I'm I'm lucky to play a part in it. And you submitted the season opener just for laughs. And I want to talk about that opening shot because yeah, I cool. thought just it's really cool how you sort of it's this landscape shot, and then we fly down into the hotel driveway as Deborah emerges from the car where we think it's her. And then she, we follow her through the through the lobby, and then she turns around, and it's this impersonator, and it's sort of like this callback to the series premiere when we got that reveal of Deborah. Talk about talk about that opening shot of of season three. Yeah, well, it's just it's it's a wonderful shot, and um, you know, it's, it's so many people are involved in making something like that happen that it's. Um, it's impossible for me to take, you know, I, 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 played, I played a role in it, but there, there are so many other people that deserve credit. To be honest, like when it was, when I, when I first read the script, um, I would, and that shot was written right into it. Uh, I, I was a little, I was a little nervous and, and maybe skeptical. Like, could we, could we pull, pull this off? Um, and we, you know, we scouted uh, uh, Las Vegas and Caesars was um, just so generous and willing to to play ball and kind of help us help us make this this happen. So yeah, it's a it's a wonder without any any hidden cuts. We we flew a uh, drone uh, down the Las Vegas Strip um, that was beautifully piloted by uh, Ben Ellingson and um, then his uh, his fellow drone operator Daniel. Uh, Perrier was hiding behind a car in the ballet of Caesars. And uh, as the camera sort of flew over the fountain, he uh, sneakily like ran out from behind the car and seamlessly caught the camera um, and carried it through uh, through the casino. We landed um, at a beautiful set that was uh, designed by our production designer, who's also nominated this season, Rob Tokars. Um, the whole thing just required required so so many technicians trying to trying to figure out how how to make this happen. Uh, it was actually the last shot that we did of the season was this opening frame. So we we wrapped in Vegas, and um, you know there were it was it was a working casino, so there were a ton of limitations. We we weren't Rob and his team weren't able to start building the set until midnight, um, and then we started rolling. I think at at one. So they had practiced the construction of this with our lighting team and got it all designed. Um, and we did, you know, several takes. And uh, if memory serves, I think, you know, we got maybe three hours in, we got we got one that we loved and and everyone everyone cheered. And it was just like a wonderful way to to wrap up several months of of, of shooting the show. 
I was going to say, I've been to Caesar's Palace. It doesn't seem like something that can just shut down for, for, for days. It's chaos. No, I think like some of the, the background performers are actually people that were there to, to gamble in the, in the middle of the night. It was, it was a really fun, it was a fun atmosphere. You know, a lot of, a lot of visual credit, you know, you mentioned that this was sort of a creatively a callback to, um, to the opening of the series in season one. Uh, and a lot of the visual credit, I think, goes to Kathleen Felix Hager, our wonderful costume designer, who um, who put the performer in a in a in sort of a seamless, um, reflective um, uh, blazer, uh, a callback to season one. And I think that that does, you know, there's only so much lighting you can do to draw the eye um, in a one or like that, where you're starting blocks away and ending at the very end of a, a casino. And that blazer, I think, really sparkles and, and draws your attention and really centers and grounds the frame in a wonderful way. And the series takes place in Las Vegas and several, there's a lot you film exterior wise in Las Vegas, but it's a LA based show. I mean, you're, you're in studio here. Talk about balancing that and, and how you get sort of the seamless look and, and, you know, the equipment or, or coloring that you have to use to, to make that all pull together. Yeah. I think you have to be very, you know, artful and um, conscientious in your framing. And, you know, I work closely with Lucia and, and Paul who, who direct a lot of, a lot of the episodes to, to make sure we're framing things uh, in the right way. But then, you know, you, you get to lean on your collaborators. So uh, Kyle Suker, our uh, wonderful location manager, just does a great job of finding wonderful locations here in Los Angeles that could play as Las Vegas. Uh, and then Charlie Panyon, our, our second unit director of photography, uh, will go to Vegas and he'll shoot establishing shots and textures. And I think that his his photography is 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 both beautiful, but um, he does just a great job. I think of 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 world creation and um, really creating. Not you know, does it's not it's not just a show that's that's set in Las Vegas. It's set in sort of our interpretation of Las Vegas. And then Charlie plays a, plays a big a big role in that. Um, and then, and then we do we do go to Vegas and and we'll 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 shoot uh, a couple of weeks there. Um, we did a really uh, fun scene this season uh, with with Gene uh, on the strip that was just just a trip. Um, and then obviously you know blew that drone. So and you've filmed comedy specials before. You worked on Hannah Einbinder's recent comedy special. So there's certain a certain style to that and. How do you bring that into the show uh, of hacks and make it look like really authentic stand-up comedy? Is there a difference in in how you film those live performances that Deborah's giving in a big stage versus you know them having a private conversation in a hotel room? Yeah, you know, I I, I have I have filmed comedy specials before, but it's not it's not my area of expertise. And I was you know, I shot Hannah's special uh, after we wrapped season three. Um, and was was honored that she that she asked me uh, to shoot it, and it was actually really hard and scary and uh, very different than shooting a comedy special on Hacks. You know, it's 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 actually it's easier on Hacks because you can you can break the shots down into different parts and shoot them independently and, and light each one independently and trying to figure out on Hannah's actual special how we were going to take multiple cameras and make them all look as beautiful as they were in our minds, uh, but shoot them simultaneously uh, was was quite the challenge. Um, for the, for the, for the comedy, the comedy work, uh, on, on the series hacks, you know, I try to, you know, look at, look at references and then try as best I can to, uh, be expressive with them. So I try to have the lighting and the vibe, uh, represent where our characters are in the story. Um, so, um, you know, in, in, in episode one, um, just after this drone shot, you see, uh, Deborah Vance on stage um, in in sort of a down moment where you realize that she's kind of running through the motions again and and unable to uh, unable to connect with the audience in the way that she wants. So the lighting of the special is cooler and a little more sterile and contrastier to sort of reflect that. So I've, I think it's, it's it's fun in a show when you um, can, can play with that and subconsciously affect the the mood of the scenes um, across across the series. What's the biggest challenge for you on a on a series like Hacks? Just in general, as a cinematographer, what what are those challenges you go into and in daily that that give you the make you think the hardest and pose the biggest problems? 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's the, you know, the, these scripts are are so fabulous um, and um, just so beautifully written and uh, these characters are so strong. Uh, you want um, the cinematography to uh, kind of live up to live up to that and and meet the moment. Um, and, you know, it can be uh, uh, we want the show to be very filmic and expressive and beautiful and like worthy of the words that are written. And that that can be a challenge on a on a condensed uh, television schedule. But, you know, you figure it out. Yeah, well, congratulations. And everyone wants everyone wants to give Jean Smart the best the best look she can to do her thing. I mean, she's she's a legend in the, in the business. So congratulations uh, once again on your Emmy nomination and good luck this September. Yeah, thank you so much.